So tonight I'm talking to Fred Schindel, who lives in Chattanooga, Tennessee. He is the keyboard player and uh, one of the co-composers in the progressive rock band Glass Hammer. And uh, Fred, I'm glad you could talk to me tonight. I'm glad to be here. here. It's good to, good to see you again. Yeah, same here, man. Um, well, I thought we'd just get started by just asking you a little bit about your history. Like, uh, you know, where are you from? Where'd you grow up? You know, tell us a little bit about yourself, like your background, your, your personal history. Well, I actually started out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, we had a piano in the house, and I guess I kind of started plunking away on it at a fairly early age, kind of took an interest in it. So my parents got me lessons. And when I was actually still pretty young, like, uh, I don't know, 11 or 12 years old, I started taking piano lessons when I was nine. And uh, my piano teacher was also the local church organist. So I started taking pipe organ lessons from him. When I was about 12, I was playing in church. I was actually kind of acting more or less as an assistant organist for this parish with like, I don't know, 1,500 people or, <laughs> or something. Wow, so, yeah. Actually, the parish <laughs> would have been a lot bigger than that, but I mean, the people showing at the church, it was it was a fairly large Catholic church. So right. that was a trip. And then um, when I was 14, we moved to Denver, Colorado. Okay. And uh, when I was in high school, I started thinking about, you know, wanting to be in bands and managed to get my parents to buy me a Hammond M3 organ, which was a, you know, big deal in those days. I mean, we're talking 1978 and 1979. If you wanted to be a keyboard player back then, I mean, there was no cheap way to go about it. You were going to have to lay out some money for some gear. So even a huge Hammond organ was probably a big deal. And I don't think I ever appreciated back then, you know, yeah. how cool it was that they bought me that. So I had my little Hammond organ and Leslie. And I didn't really know that you were supposed to play in high school bands and stuff. I just started going out and trying to audition for, like, real bands with, you know, grown-ups and stuff. And I got in there. <laughs> right. In retrospect, they probably weren't really a very good band, but it was a good learning experience for me. And, you know, a cover band with guys probably in their, you know, late 20s, early 30s, which were, you know, old men as far as I was concerned. But you know, we went <laughs> right. out and played in bars and... You know, that was kind of the start of me playing rock and roll. And my parents also sprung for a mini mode. So, you know, I was legit. I had a Hammond organ and a mini mode. Wow. And that was what you said, 1978? Yeah. Holy cow. So, <laughs> so and, now, and you say, now when did you move? You said you moved to Denver when? 78. That wasn't 78. 78. Okay. So it was probably 79 or 80 when I actually started gigging. Because, well, I was, a, I was a sophomore, so. Okay. I'll call it 79. And, uh, yeah, and that, that was the beginning of it. And believe it or not, for a little while, I was in a band with a guy named Dan Lyle, who, uh, years later, I tried down again. It turns out he's now in a band called Agilon. And, okay. Uh, yeah, and he plays with, uh, or was playing with, um, uh, oh, see, now this is going to be embarrassing. I'm going to have brain farts on camera and not be able to remember anybody's name. Uh, the bass player who plays with, um, uh, Neil Morris and um, oh, uh, dude, you know, uh, he's not, is it Spock's beard. Well, not that guy, but no, he's the guy that's playing with uh, all Neil's solo stuff now. When they go out and do like Testimony Live and all that. Oh, oh, it's it's because he's not with Spock's beard anymore. Right. Is that right? Right, exactly. Right. He was, he was like that a, one like bass a, player. I know what you're talking. No, no, that's that's ridiculous. I, I, I don't know his name. Yeah. This is so embarrassing. We'll insert this in later because I mean, I'm right. Sure. <laughs> right. And it turns out, I mean, he was gigging around Denver, and I never actually ran into him or not. But we were both kind of living there at the same time, playing in different bands. And I played with Dan, who was a great drummer. And then some Dan yeah. wind up in Seattle, playing with this other guy from Denver, and then you know the, he moved to Nashville, and it's crazy. But uh, right, right, <laughs> and then. I, a very roundabout way, I wound up going from Denver to Tennessee eventually, and that's how I wound up here. And after many stupid adventures and country bands and things like that, I wound up in doing glass <laughs> hands with Steve. So right. I mean, it's a, it, 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 the entire interview will be taken up with explaining how that whole course of action went down. But... Right. <laughs> So now, was a uh, so was did you have a particularly musical family? Is that what led to it, or? Well, yeah, nobody actually played any instruments. 
but uh, they were all very into music and enjoyed music and would, you know, had good record collections. My mother always liked to sing. I think she took vocal training for a while. I mean, she was never, you know, particular. She, she, she didn't sing in front of people, but she just sang for herself. She sang in the church choir. But, uh, and my dad would always say that the only thing he knew how to play was the radio, but they were both music enthusiasts. And right. like when we lived in Pittsburgh, they had uh, tickets to the symphony and we got to go to Heinz Hall and see the Pittsburgh symphony with uh, Andre Previn. And, wow. and, you know, that was pretty cool. Matter of fact, I think I even got to see Steinberg back in the early days, although I don't have many memories of, but I do remember seeing Previn. That was pretty cool. No yeah. Wow, so, man. man. That's, cool. That's cool. It was cool. So, yes, we were a musical family, but I was the... Well, my brother played trumpet, so we all had... All the kids had lessons in school, but I was the only one that really kind of took it anywhere and said, right, I right. want to be a musician. So, when, so, so you moved to to Denver in 78, and you're what? A sophomore in high school, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was a freshman when we moved. I, I, we moved right before high school. I started high school. In okay. Denver. Uh, but I'd say I was a sophomore. It was the second year of high school is when I started actually trying to play professionally and getting into bands okay. and figuring that thing out. And what kind and of I probably only you? played in like two or three cover bands. Didn't play a whole lot of cover stuff. I started getting into original bands pretty early on. Oh, okay. okay. And you could get away with a certain amount of that. In the music scene at the time, you could do kind of like a 50-50 thing. You could play like half originals, half covers and get gigs. Right, right, right. So yeah, I was actually mostly in some pretty lousy bands. If you really want to be, <laughs> but it was all a learning experience. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right exactly. <laughs>